So we are we are all for now, I think. Hello, everybody, um, and welcome. <laughs> and Luja, you want to start? Yes, thank you, Rebecca. So hi, everyone. It's very nice to be here. Uh, and uh, I'm Luja, and with uh, Lea Venet, who's also here. Um, we're from Organ Vida uh, Photography Organization, which is based in Zagreb, Croatia. Um, so just to tell you everyone a little bit about the organization, we were launched in 2010 with our main program and most recognizable program, program photography or, uh, festival Organ Vida. And actually with this exhibition, we are opening uh, this year's festival. Um, so uh, sort of being part of Parallel from the beginning and hosting the first inter intersection in 2018, then the following year, seeing uh, our local curator, Lovro Japonjic, who is now part of our curatorial collective, um, be part of Second Cycle uh, Curator with Parallel. We have really seen to the, towards this year uh, the benefits and impact of the platform. So we're really, really excited to see uh, Yulia's curatorial project uh, come to life. From uh, meeting her in person and all the First Cycle artists at Intersection uh, Budapest, and seeing the development of the project in Dublin, and then finally hosting uh, Julia in Zagreb, having to let her know about our work and our collaborators and the uh, general uh, cultural scene. So um, even though now we're sort of in this uh, on more online uh, environment, there has really been a lot of real life uh, work and experience. And uh, really, from our side, we're especially happy to see that this online exhibition was still able to have a part of uh, sort of our collaborators and our local element, which is uh, this collaboration for the catalog and materials with OASA, from which uh, these designers who were working on it will be joining us later on. Um, I really don't want to take too much time, but uh, because there are so many interesting things to talk about, I just want to say that uh, working with Julia was a really a pleasure and seeing her sort of ambition and the drive for this year was really refreshing. Um, yeah, so uh, I will pass my word uh, to Rebecca uh, to have an introduction to this uh, night's program. Thank you, Luja. Uh, so to tell everybody a little bit about Parallel, uh, Parallel is a phot photography-based platform that links uh, different institutions uh, from all over Europe, links to photography, so museums, festivals, magazines, um, and these are the members of the platform. And then we link them with uh, new artists and new curators in order to create new exhibitions and to uh, bring new names into the art world. So this is the main, um, the main objective of, of the platform. It is a platform co-funded by uh, the Creative Europe program from the European Union. Uh, and unfortunately this year we got uh, hit by, by this pandemic and we had to turn all these exhibitions in uh, an online program that we call the Parallel Online. Um, and so today we are launching this exhibition, The Future is Not Guilty, or is it? We don't know. But uh, I will let maybe Yulia talk about it. Yes, thank you a lot, Rebecca. And maybe we can share one small image before I start to talk, or maybe rather I would start um, telling you a little bit about this project before we could explore and discover it together. So this project started as a reflection on archive as a medium and the starting point was the idea of an archive related to memory and to the past and the will to explore the concept of an archive between documentary and fiction. But then actually many other questions appeared. Whom are the archives made by and for whom? How from a pieces of information it consists of, it can contribute to knowledge and narrative construction. And what would be the archive of the future we're about to construct today? So we considered the archive as a construction beyond historical linearity as a meta archive and came out with the concept of a future oriented archive. What if the archive we construct is a message in a battle for the future? And what should this message be like? How could and should it be read in the future? We say sometimes that the history is built on the gaps of an archive, on those elements that someone had decided not to include 
in the common archive and in the common history. And that's one of the ways knowledge become political and actually everything becomes political. How could we consider the future if we don't learn from the lessons from the past? How can we predict future if we can't see previous patterns? Like Ernst Friedrich Schumacher said, the future cannot be forecast, but it can be explained. So what would be the binder between past, present and future, between knowledge and perception, history and memory, archive and photography? And these concepts are interconnected and depending how do we set them together, we produce new forms of knowledge, the future memories or the memory of future. If studying and revisiting archives often relates us to the past, actually the very concept of archive is future focused, always future focused. And our project questioned the concept of archive in its historical and imaginary past and future documentary and fictional aspects. As a prism of kaleidoscope, it offers multiple perceptions and points of view that become alive and moving in spectator hands exactly like in the kaleidoscope metaphor. And our project is built as a constellation or rather multiple possibilities of constellations and as multiple prisms to look through. Each of the, of the artists went beyond their project concepts in order to consider the future is not guilty as our new common project. Our project is based on the values of horizontal and collaborative curatorial practice. And each of the artists developed their artistic works while reflecting on connections and intersections with the other projects. And thank to all of you, Carola, George, Joachim, Margarita and Sorin for stepping out of your comfort zone and for sharing, experimenting and inventing together. This is a brave act of artistic engagement, of revisiting your researches and projects in order to build something bigger together. Current situation of the world dealing with pandemic and multiple social and political crises and suddenly permanently changing our focus of attention and of perception on what's important demonstrates how much do we need to develop open-ended, process-based rather than result-oriented liquid practices that we could appropriate and interact with immediately, that also we could adjust by being inventive, agile and experimenting. There is an urge and an opportunity to broaden our perspective on existing systems of knowledge, of meanings, of mediums and of methods. An urge to engage, an urge for an act of engagement. And to my mind, being an artist or a curator is no more related just to the art field, but an act of engagement, merging arts with social and political context, with everyday life and curator and artist become engaged roles enable a policy, enabling a polycentric vision on different concepts, cultures and knowledge systems, enabling the broadening of perspectives and creation of constellations of meaning. Together we reflect on an archive as a knowledge construction tool which is permanently evolving. And we would like the audience to join us in this journey and to interact with the website exploring different aspects of an archive, different connections between the projects and the concepts and also to participate in our collaborative Padlet that you will see while you will discover different uh, paths through our interactive website. So you, it will bring you to this Padlet and we would like you to participate and collaborate to that by bringing the different elements and reflections on the future oriented archive topic. And as about the audience, we had just spoke about engagement and interaction and that's the part where we could evoke interaction as an art of engagement because whenever you choose as a spectator or a visitor, if it concerns websites or a reader, if it concerns a publication, whenever you choose to put your gaze on something and to reflect, to put it into different perspective, it's an engagement and also a huge responsibility as your perception of an art project is not due only to the art piece, but to your responsibility as the spectator or of those who connect what you see with the context and knowledge systems. An Austrian film director and screenwriter uh, Michael Haneke said that a movie is like a springboard, but it's a spectator who jumps. We can say the same about photography, because images are today elements of an engaged citizen gaze, and by citizen I mean very large scale, not a citizen of any particular place, um, of citizen approach to understand the world and to make connections between past and present in order to consider a better future. So to jump from a springboard is another act of engagement I wanted to evoke today. And now I'm wondering if constructing a future-oriented archive is like preparing a message in a battle or a time capsule for future, what would be your message of each one of you? And maybe you could share your thoughts on that in, your, in our Padlet page. 
And now um, another very important thing that I wanted to share with you before giving the word to you know, dear artists. We imagined this project as a research and reflection, but actually life had decided a bit in another way. And as a proof that everything is political, after the global pandemic situation we all went through, and the current situation in Belarus, my home country, this project is more than political and more than engaged for me. I would like to dedicate my part of this project, the curatorial one, to Belarus and its people and to all those who struggle today for truth and freedom and who wants to build a different future, respecting the complexity of the past, but also considering this values of truth and freedom. And now let's explore, actually the project may be um, an important, an important note is that one of our modes of interaction in the frame of the publication that Nina will talk about later is the card set that we made. So you could make your own narratives and constellations of meanings, images and texts with its help. And today we propose you to explore some of these cards and to discover artist projects with the help of these cards. And also we will show you different artist pages meanwhile. So I propose you to see the card for the artist Carola Lampe. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. So you see here the image and in the other side you have uh, you have a text. So we are not alone in the construction of the future. And I think Carola will explain why we're showing this card today and how does her project reflect on this topic of a future oriented archive. Yes, so thank you. Um, yeah, is it a statement or is it a question? We don't know. Um, there are many forces uh, like far past and present events, knowledge and experience, as well as politics and power that might have an influence on the construction of the future. But as digital technologies and artificial intelligence especially are developing so rapidly, they increasingly will shape our future. I think. So this is what my project Tell Me What You See is about. I was researching around AI and the impact new technologies have on human experience. So we are not alone. We have another intelligence at our side. As today, algorithms and artificial intelligence are already widely used in all aspects of our lives. So it's used in a lot of places like health and warfare, transportation, urban development, consumerism, to name just a few. So it comes in the form of just some software or in the form of a robot or a humanoid, which might look like us. So it's basically aimed to optimize every aspect of our lives and it's here to help us and will define how we are going to live in the future. But obviously there's also a concern that those algorithms and AI systems give too much power to some people, to business corporations or governments. Uh, but where does the intelligence come from? So AI works like this. Uh, by combining large amounts of data with fast processing and intelligent algorithms, allowing the software to learn automatically from patterns or features in that data. So data is the basis of those systems. And of course, somebody needs to decide which data is going to be used. So we should ask ourselves like who provides the data? Where does the data come from? And what kind of information is used? And especially in the digital world, there is so much data around that it's getting more and more difficult to distinguish between what is garbage, what is valid data, what is real, what is fake. And those um, AI systems are looking for patterns in that data. So it might happen that stereotypes or prejudices are encoded in the data set. We'll get then reinforced in the 
AI machine or the artificial intelligence system. So the question is also who is deciding what data is garbage and what data is valid. So which moral values will provide the standard for it. So all of these questions are really tricky questions. But if to this is um, to a certain extent also in an old school archive that also stores historical information and somebody decided what to put. And um, therefore it most definitely will also be biased. So we are not alone. There is artificial intelligence constructing the future, but who is creating those machines and systems? I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's us, the human being, who creates and develops those machines. And we can give or can decide to give the power to some people, to a few people who are developing those um, systems, or we can decide to use it for ourselves and um, take part in the development of it. But maybe at the end, are we alone after all? So, to just briefly talk about my project, so that's what I try to look. I try to look at the now uh, and the present and imagine the future, imagining the future. And in the way I have created an archive of the future, but this is basically really much based on past and present. And I use and work with the ideas of those digital technologies like computer generated images, AI generated images, 3D and so on. And I play around with <coughs> notions of error and bias and the idea of real and fake. So yeah, that's what I was uh, thinking about um, the topic to this uh, card. I don't know, Julia, if you want to. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, let... Carola. I was trying to share your page, but somehow it's, it was not working, but we are checking what's going on. Just okay. So I don't know, uh, I could talk a little bit about the process we were working together and how I felt about this. And maybe how did it change if it's oh. your perspective on your own project? Yeah, so in yeah, so this process we are working on was immediately overshadowed by the pandem pandemic. Um, as we were meeting on a weekly basis, we went through all those phases together in a way, like anxiety, being in lockdown, coming out of lockdown, etc. So the world became really small and we were thrown back to our own biology, trying to avoid catching a virus. And um, actually with the same methods as in the Middle Ages. So here again, we go back to the past in order to gain knowledge and uh, continue to the future. And um, yeah, technology became important in order to stay connected to the world. But um, for me personally, um, in the beginning, I wasn't really in interested in the technology or I didn't really think that it's important because the basic needs were in the forefront. And um, yeah, the future became uncertain and unstable in a way. So, and while working on this exhibition project, for me, the connections between the subject of archive and all of the works included in that exhibition become uh, more and more apparent. Uh, so I thought that we, we work or yeah, we um, ask ourselves similar questions, but then the outcome is a different one. But at the end, I felt much closer to all the other works than I did at, in the beginning, maybe. And I think that we can explore it afterwards. You could explore it in this interactive page that we will have, how different works are connected, including Carola's work and uh, how how it creates the new meanings for each of these particular works and a new global meaning for the whole project. Yeah, 
Yeah, thank you, Carola. Did you have something to add or? Uh, me? No, um, I think that's, that's it for now. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Carola, but somehow we had this uh, issue with your page, but we will try to, to recover it until the, the end of the conversation and we will uh, still show your work. Um, maybe, Yulia, we go to another artist. And the next person is uh, George Sealy. So now we will see the card for him and he will explain the project about the future and the guiltiness and actually about much more other things. Thank you, Yulia. Um, so the text in this, uh, on this card, um, comes from a uh, textbook, a manual. It was a, a, a training manual entitled the Human Exploitation Training Manual. And it was used at a US military academy um, called the School of Americas, which was set up in Panama in 1946. Um, and it, the School of Americas was a US military academy that trained Latin American soldiers um, and over 60,000 Latin American soldiers have been trained there and in total 11 dictators uh, attended the school um, and some of the region's most notorious human rights abusers uh, especially in the 70s and the 80s um, uh, death squad leaders and even drug traffickers um, um, the, uh, it's a very shocking list of alumni that the, uh, the US government claimed to be uh, a few bad apples is the words that they use but this manual uh is what my work for this exhibition revolves around and this uh section of text is a extract from that manual and the manual is concerned with interrogation techniques so it teaches uh how to extract information from people uh and um it advocates abduction, uh, illegal imprisonment, um, physical and psychological torture, and even execution. Um, and um, this was a standard textbook for students at the, at, the, uh, at the academy. And the work functions in quite a similar way to this card in the sense that it pairs extracts of text uh, from the manual with images and the images are all from the University of Milwaukee Photography Archive. They are all taken by uh, two photographers, Isaiah Bowman and Eugene Vernon Harris, who were using photography to chart and map and document Latin America on behalf of the US Foreign Service um, in the early to mid 20th century. And um, it's uh, the, the, this kind of um, this kind of um, process of assembling and reassembling images and text um, is a kind of approach. Uh, this this approach can be sort of um, associated with a damaged and twisted memory that sort of needs to be reassembled, maybe, um, uh, and a way of kind of. Um, reassembling, revisiting and reconsidering um, the contemporary historical narrative and to somehow um, appreciate the complexity of the historical narrative, which I think uh, in the case of um, Latin America can be oversimplified um, and to appreciate the complexity of current geopolitical um, issues in the region. Um, It's part of a uh, larger collaborative body of work entitled Is This Tomorrow? which is um, uh, um, a much larger body of work that aims to kind of foster dialogues between um, artists, uh, mostly within Latin America, but also um, with, it, with people and communities um, 
particularly in places where a lot of the atrocities um, that some of the graduates from the school committed um, happened. And um, to revisit and, uh, and um, enter into a dialogue with these people and to um, uh, reconsider some of these events in a different light to how we might consider them now. Thank you, George. Um, we we now have Carola's page. No, we don't. <laughs> so who goes next? So let's discover something about a cryptological languages that enable us to encode the messages or to pass the messages right. So it will be the work of Joachim Bugidal. Close. I try to pronounce well. <laughs> it was close. Um, can we do the shared screen? Okay. So in my card that we chose to show now, uh, it is um, predict the future. Um, can you go back? predict the pattern, predict the future. And I think this card for me represents kind of the soul of this project, at least to me. Um, it came up when we started discussing on this topic of the archive in Dublin. Um, and I was starting to put together that I was taught by a professor that within film montage, there's a philosophical belief that if you can predict uh, the pattern, you can predict the next pattern and the next pattern, which could be translated to predicting the future until it changes and you have to go back to the past, understand the, um, the pattern again, in order to continuously um, predict the future. And in this is, um, if you take this idea and you you put it over the top of the idea of the archive. It means that if you can go back into the, to the archive, the archive is the pattern itself. And you have to understand it, and then you can start understanding or predicting the future. You can get help to understanding it through the archive, through the pattern, until it changes again, and you need to go back into it. But something that came up in that discussion for me was the, the privilege of the archive. And if we go further into this topic, it's something I never really thought about. But if you have the ability to predict the future through understanding an archive, but the archive is privileged that you cannot access the archive. It's only the chosen through that can access the archive. The university students, the librarians, the people with access in general will then also have the opportunity to, to predict the future. And then the discussion of, of knowledge is power today. So if you're already in a seat of privilege that have um, the access to the knowledge to the archive, the unevenness of knowledge and power becomes even greater. And I think this is something that really interested, interests me in the way we have been working about this project, the whole The Future is Not Guilty project, not just my own. And it's something that really sparks huge discussions on the topic of archive and I think it brings a new perspective to it as well. Um, and it's something that I will take further myself in my next ideas. And also I hope we can elaborate it on it as a group later on. To 
but it's also where like the archive becomes extremely political uh, when it's it's for the privileged and the privileged can gain more power. But in my own project, it's it's uh, it's called Emissaries, and it's a collection of sixteen flowers that is uh, stating their meaning underneath it. And the meaning comes from a huge list uh, taken from the florography of the Victorian age. So it's a cryptological language at that time used to send messages that you maybe could not speak openly about, forbidden love or etc. cetera. Um, and then the meanings are stated underneath the single images. Um, and you can see it as me making a Victorian bouquet and giving it to the viewer with a big message on the wall in the installation, um, which just was installed in Lens Corner with 13 of these pieces um, with a message on the wall that can be decoded uh, in front of you. And in, in the project itself, it's a faked archive. All the, the images that you see on them are not an archive that I specifically collected going out photographing. It's an archive that I made by stealing pictures from Google image search and photoshopping them into looking like four by five images and then printing them in the dark room. So they are silver gelatin prints which is also a part uh, of this project, asking questions of how meaning is constructed. It can just be in within an artwork and can be in within language, cryptological communication systems. Um, so this is the okay that I have created for this project. I would also like to add maybe that on the website you can discover the artistic statements, but also the conversations that we had all together in order to discover different parts of each artist project concepts, because they have so numerous ways to actually perceive them. So you can discover it afterwards too. Yeah, thank you, Joachim. And now we will go to this cover for discovering something also about the materiality of an image and an archive and something maybe related to this palimpsest idea of multiple layers and I think Margarita Moriti will tell better than me about her projects and its relationship to the archive and to the future. Hello everybody. See the card I think. So actually, I think this card gradually hiding and revealing um, is a quite good card to present the work, to sum up the work. And one of my, of the starting points of the project was this idea of questioning the power of images and the way we physically relate to them, as well as the relationship between the act of seeing and the act of touching. And I asked myself questions such as, do we see in order to see better, to see further, or maybe do we see when we cannot see, or do we touch when we stop to stop seeing? And the installation is uh, consists of images hidden in uh, layers of wax, and the heating light bulbs, which is suspended above them, and um, slowly reveal the images. And the wax surface is when the work surface is hot enough it becomes transparent and the the images appear and i would say maybe that the work is something like um, a swing between hiding and revealing and i think that the word revealing in itself is links very well my project to the to our exhibition collective work 
revealing in the sense of uh, uncover or maybe take away the veil but i think the interesting part is the the re at the beginning of the word which somehow suggests a sort of um reversal or maybe even something which is uh, which happens again one more time a sort of reiteration or repetition and actually one of the first images we shared you and me talking about the the exhibition at the beginning it was this idea of palimpsest which is a, a support like a like a page you used to write or to to draw and rewrite above and it was even used in psychoanalytical studies in order to to suggest a metaphor of memory a sort of magic tablet which was able to keep which is able actually to keep memory recorded and uh, is the invisible part of our memory and it's also a little bit like the children drawing tablets where they draw and they clean and then redraw above so there is a surface above the visible one where we can write and then or draw and then clean and uh, rewrite and redraw again and an invisible one below that registers all the marks. And in my work, I could say that these, um, the works could be seen as the element that uh, records such these marks, such as the fingerprints, for example, or even when the, when the works is, um, goes back to his, um, to his cold state, it keeps a sort of mark of the heat of the light bulbs. And even the palimpsest idea, the word palimpsest means that it's something which is scraped again. And uh, I think it's interesting to see how it, um, this idea of again, how it implies the existence of uh, other surfaces laying one on the other. And which is a little bit what we, we have been working on for our exhibition concept, trying to, um, to consider somehow the vertical disposition of an archive material and trying to look at it in a more horizontal way, looking at the role, considering the role of the, of the viewer, of the role that a viewer could play in, in diving into an archive, as well as all the possibilities that the, he can explore, we have explored, and going, it's a sort of going back and forth between all this material and all this information of an archive. And I think that, yeah, I would add that my, my work is, is maybe more focused on the idea of transformation than on the idea of a recording, a registering, a gradual transformation, which is slow, sometimes slow, and sometimes more rapid the time of, uh, of the transformation itself. I mean, the, it can be quite long, the time the light needs to reveal the image and uh, very fast, the time the, the works needs to, to hide the image again. And it's something that happened as well during the, the creative process. I mean, when I, the way I work on images, the way I printed them, and I went through a series of uh, repetitive gestures that uh, just go along with the transformation on the images and let me look at this, at the transformation of the image itself in this uh, in-between space of the, the touching my hands somehow, sometimes, and the image itself. And also there is this notion of non-linear temporality mm -hmm. which is related to the archive as we had developed this concept of an archive. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. And now maybe let's talk about another aspect that archive and thinking about future Cambrinas. It's related to the feeling of contingency. But also to this idea of a um, kaleidoscope of images or cloud of images or multiple possibilities. So let's, let's give a word to Soren Lilholt. Thanks. Maybe we should start with the car, Rebecca.
Yeah. So mm, the text on the card, um, I think in many ways actually yeah, applies to both the project, but in a very general way to how I mm, try to work with photography and art and images uh, as a whole. And mm, the text is very linked to like a text by a French philosopher called Maurice Merleau-Ponty. Um, and he says uh, that uh, that we do not look at images, but we see with images. And it's this little change is quite far-reaching because if we think of looking at images uh, in a way that we see with them instead of just at them, it becomes a question of the relations between the viewer and the image. And that gives the image a power to be um, like an entity of its own. So we generally have a tendency to think, especially about photography, but also about the archive as some sort of structured, a very linear uh, sort of verification of knowledge. So you take an image to verificate something, or you create an archive to preserve some sort of knowledge. Um, but if we look at images as, as a way of having their own lives, it means that we have to like acknowledge that images also have a very direct impact on the way that we perceive the world. And if you want to, if, and if you follow that thought like radically to the end, it would also mean that images would always have the possibility to change their meaning and to and to um, form new constellations of meaning. And I think that was very much what this project is about because all of our, all of our uh, different projects are from very different standpoints and we have been working together to finding like connections between them. And, from, uh, and I think the project that I have been working on was like set out in a way where I tried to very intuitively go out and, f and uh, produce images. Um, and then I would sort of ask these images what they could tell me about, <clears throat> about myself and about like, mm, there's some sort of unconscious sense about the world. And when I looked through the images, I felt this, mm, I had the sense of very, this very demeaning feeling to them. They were kind of claustrophobic and empty. And I, and I came to think of this word contingency. The project is called Echoes of Contingency. Um, and a contingent proposition is something that's not true, definitely true, and it's not definitely false. So it's somewhere in between. And also, a contingency is something that you prefer for that might happen in the future, uh, which is almost always something bad. Um, and yeah, it was weird uh, creating the project and creating these thoughts about the title and then discovering like a month, a few months later that the whole world was going into lockdown. <laughs> Uh, that felt almost like a prediction of the future. I don't know where it came from. And then uh, a part of the project is that I have been working uh, with the installment of the images in these sorts of frames where I have fitted a special kind of filter in front of the images, um, which makes them only visible when you're standing right in front of them. And so when you move at an angle to the image, it will shut down and become like a red mirror. Um, and this was also a way for me to like point to the fact that each image has like its own private sphere and it's in the meeting between the image and the viewer that um, the creation of meaning and knowledge opens up and and so when looking through all of these images the in the installation there are 11 in total you won't be able to like see all the images at once. So as you walk through, the images will open up and shut down. 
and that's a way to like push the viewer into bringing their own memory and imagination into the experience of the work and i think this whole revealing and hiding and and uh, the transformation that uh, Margarita told about talked about is like also a general theme in in the exhibition um, Joachim's way of you know dealing in so many ways with this this fluorography and and using like the web and analog and um, and George's way of like reconstructing a very sensitive topic in a way that visually um, uh, transform something that's very um, i think difficult to comprehend and something that people might not realize into a visual as aspect that becomes part of you know your knowledge base and imaginary that you would bring forward into the world um, yes i think i think I will keep it to that. Thank you. Thank you, Soren. And maybe some of you wanted to add something or to question some of the fellows folks on the on the project. Because if not, or if you'd like to do it later, then we can we can um, welcome Nina, who is we the will, designer. Um, sorry, Julia. Maybe we can uh, now show the, the project of Carola that we were not able to see before. Oh, great. Sure. with Carola we actually worked on the concept of clusters of images and we tried to classify actually images regarding different aspects of her project such as for example bias images or images also with this feeling of anxiety or contingency about the future or some images with uh, for example artificial intelligence generated images or some that just visually reveal this, evolve this concept. So you can also see how this project that was an exhibition project initially, a physical exhibition, became actually a digital project, a publication. But also we hope that it will be exhibited in Lisbon in November. And we also hope that we could manage to make it travel afterwards and also develop as a group, as some of you have said already. But also it would be interesting to, um, to hear Nina, the designer of this publication maybe to say some some words about this experience from your perspective oh we don't hear you yeah. hello hi uh, first of all I would like to thank you uh, 
Julia and Olga Vida for, in, uh, uh, for inviting me to be a part of this uh, challenging project. Um, so Julia was a uh, kind of a bridge between designer and artists. Uh, and it's really interesting. I've been working uh, on a lot of uh, projects with uh, curators and artists, but this uh, project is very particular because it's been really collaborative work. Um, and from the beginning, it, it was like that. Uh, and actually, Julia came uh, with this idea of uh, creating something together. So, uh, so uh, from the beginning, the idea was to create a typical uh, publication. So I'm going to show you a bit uh, because like uh, we, we got it today. Uh, so it's going to be hard to really see. But uh, so we decided publication to be kind of a package and um, that consists of uh, um, six posters, uh, flyers, posters, and a compilation of conversations and cards. So actually, when you uh, when you get the package, each artist has a one uh, one uh, poster with their artist state art statements and uh, and uh, like uh, one piece of art that is uh, presented uh and also the cards were a super important part of the whole project this like um this card that you could notice during the whole uh conversations so we have these like uh, cards that are on one side we can see uh pieces of art from from uh from the artist invited and on the other side you could see uh, the things they question about the future and and so so it's really interesting um, interesting approach to this uh, theme uh, and then what is what I find really nice is that that we decided to put uh, in in the whole uh, uh, project these uh, conversations uh, you did together uh, uh, while discussing the whole project uh, and and this is maybe even the most interesting or like uh, the, the part that explains the most of it so um uh, the time is uh, interesting and the the, the moment we we've, we've been working on it is crazy because it's been holidays uh, the whole month of the holidays and it was so challenging to to finish this work because like the printing places and everything gets crazy during the summer period but we i'm very happy that we managed to 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 make it on time so so at least i had this one piece finished for tonight so that 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 you could see a bit of it uh, i think that that's all i mean Thank you again for, for being a part. I hope um, that the artist and all of you will be happy seeing it alive. It's nicer alive than on images. Uh, so yes, that's it. I, I think I said, maybe you, if you remember something else you would like to speak. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you too for this. Like great work which was also collaborative work i mean you also i guess for all of us and for you it was to step out of the zone of comfort somehow and it was very interesting to um see this artistic work which was not only related to the artists doing their work but artistic work of designers who interpret somehow the artistic works and propose their solutions and their visions on how can we make this publication happen and how can we lead it to the audience as well. I think yeah, the, the one thing I didn't mention is like this, um, uh, this package uh, is um, kind of left to be open. So, so uh, we didn't want to make a catalog that is kind of typical catalog that, that has all the information inside it was more like this gesture of keeping it 
open so you can put new stuff inside of this package so so that's maybe something that explains mo most of the, the 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 materialization of of this um, Thank you a lot. I don't know if there were any questions to any of us. Um, I have two things that we are all talking a lot about this collaboration that we are working on. So one is the book, of course, and then we have been seeing examples of the web page that we have created, but what is really mostly important on this web page is the archive map, which is this interactive part that we have been working on a lot. And as of now, it's still on its way here, as far as I can see, and hopefully it will be up very soon. Or maybe Rebecca has. Is it up now? It's on the process. Actually, ah, sorry, I, I couldn't speak, <laughs> but uh, it's it, we are still adjusting some things. So this is just to show you a sneak peek of how it will work. So you have this main page where you have to make some choices. And then depending on the choices you make. the map reveals itself. So everyone hopefully finds time to, to go through the map and I just want to say cheers to someone that still has some stuff in their glass and thank you for a good collaboration and to hopefully more in the future. Cheers. Here, here, here. Cheers. 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 Sing. Conclude. Yes, here is this map. I also wanted maybe to add a word about the Padlet that I told you before, I told you about before because also one of our methods of collaborative work was that we had the Padlet for Among Us, which grew up um, in very like, in something very big. And this also something that drove our um, collaborative process. And that's why we would like to engage the audience and other people in a new construction of a new Padlet, actually, to continue this common reflection somehow. For the moment, there is one message, but all of you are very welcome to add something that you would like to for this topic of the future oriented archive. If I can add something, I also had a bunch of uh, thanks that I wanted to, to say, can I? Yeah. So um, I would like to thank my brave parents, even though they don't speak English very well, but they will look um, the recording of this conversation. So I thank them for their unconditional support, including supporting me and all my thoughts and doubts concerning this project during the whole last year. Uh, also, I would like to thank, of course, the artists, um, Carola, Margarita, Joachim, George, and Soren for this, um, for this experience. I cannot even talk tell that it's just a common work. It was more, actually, it was the sharing experience of many, many things. And also I would like to thank my curator mentors, Namadu Marosa Masilela and Anna Kaiser Rustenberger for their support and their precious example, very inspiring example. Also my fellow curators of this project, Esther, Javier Mafalda, Titus and Zore, for your unconditional support as well. And also all the Organ Vida team, Barbara, Clara, Lobro, and especially Lee and Luia, with whom we worked so closely for all your help. Also to our great designers, Nina and Roberta, and to Procurator Program, and especially to Nuno and Rebecca for all your help and support. 
and also all fellow photographers of this program for all our inspiring talks and brainstormings and precious moments that we shared. And also I wanted to quote actually a Croatian artist uh, called Mladen Stilnovic, who said, there is no art without consequence. So let's hope that this project, that our project would put a brick for a different future and that could be the consequence. Thanks. Thank you, Yulia, for your kind words and thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, your, the, the work that you have shown is uh, really good. And uh, I hope also in all around and especially in Belarus, things are going better. And, uh, and uh, I hope you can, well, we can contribute uh, at least possible to, to help whatever is possible. Uh, so we are arriving to the conclusion of this uh, first phase of uh, the online uh, exhibitions of, uh, of Parallel that is concepted uh, as a, a network and a, a really a mobility project. And now we are forced to this uh, due to the pandemic to do it online with this huge distance but uh, still really nice to see all of you and, uh, and see you again. So it's really a pleasure to see your faces and to see your work and all the work that you have uh, produced. Um, and uh, I think until now, even due to some difficulties, some uh, technical difficulties uh, with some kind of technology and other things, uh, I think we achieved part of the, the most of the objective that we have uh, for this first uh, round of uh, online exhibitions. And uh, we're gonna, next week, we're gonna meet each other, some of us, uh, in the Sweden. And uh, so we're gonna have a special uh, intersection in Landskrona. So we will have the chance to meet uh, some of us. Uh, not all of us, because it's uh, all these conditions, but it will be good to, to meet each other uh, again. And, uh, and uh, after that, uh, we'll come again with the second round of the, the exhibitions uh, that uh, in September, so we're going to have a conclusion of those uh, exhibitions. Um, well, I want to thank you all for this uh, amazing work that you have produced, and uh, also the curators that also uh, put all this work uh, and make a create a coherence to the different uh, works produced by uh, by the artists and it's really a pleasure to work with all of you and uh, and uh, and also with the team of uh, uh, as uh, also uh, Julia said uh, I also want to thank you to the team of uh, Procuraci that uh, also help uh, uh, and put this together and uh, so it was really a good. Huh? And, uh, and also, of course, uh, all the members uh, that, because uh, this project is based uh, in the relation of network and network uh, relation with the, with the members. And uh, in this case, uh, Organ Vida, uh, uh, it's the member that hosts uh, this online exhibition. And, uh, but still, as, Les, as Lucia said uh, in the beginning, that uh, we're still building this uh, uh, relation and it's really good to have a, a difference from the, the first uh, intersection to the exhibition and to the, so it's really good to continue to work with all the members, the artists and the curators. And well, hope to see you all uh, in Landskrona and later uh, in Lisbon in November. Let's see what it gonna, how it's gonna happen here uh, uh, in November. Uh, so it's an it's a adventure that it's, uh, keep developing. I think this, that's all. I don't know. It's just a big thank you to all of you. I, that's I was, all, folks. I was wondering if there was some question okay. or not, but well, yeah. Cheers. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.
we're concerned. Yeah, I'm not live anymore. Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Never know. It seems that Javiera wanted to ask something, but yeah, I guess she will write a ah, message she, maybe. She, she felt uh, shy. Yeah. But Thank you guys. It was great. It was really great listening Thank you. to you. Thank you for Bye. coming, Zore. Yeah. yeah. Thank oh, you a lot. Uh, Thank you. We need to support each other. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Yeah, it was good. So I'm wondering if George and Margarita are at the same place, even though it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Two separate cameras, but... <laughs> yeah, there was a, li a light coming. Yeah, I mean, I mean when the light was normal, we could, you could have pretended, but now... <laughs> the light gave it away, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, we are together because uh, uh, it's... Uh, back is there. Ah. Yeah, me, me and Nuno, we are also cheating. Yeah. <laughs> but you have different backgrounds and a bit different lights so people can, you know. But you talk to each other in between. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Cheers and thank so you for being all here. Jean. To see you guys. Hope to see you, some of you, in the Lens Corona. So yeah. are you are you two going to Lanskrona? Yes. Of course. No. Yes. Okay. We made this project to travel. If we don't travel, that's <laughs> not logical. Uh, we are both here saying, oh, where are we going to travel again? <laughs> yeah, we go both uh, uh, and, uh, well, keep yeah, drinking nice. and dancing with distance, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Would there be something broadcasted, right, next Thursday? Yes, yes, they are preparing something in Lanskrona yeah, yeah. to broadcast something. Okay. Good. To put the makeup, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, very well. So have a good evening and... Um, okay. Yeah. Bye. See you soon. Bye. And be strong, Julia. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Hope everything goes well. Yeah, I hope so. We'll check some news. I'll call my mom to check hmm. okay. now, but yeah, hopefully. Hmm. So thank you for the support. See you soon. Uh, no meeting this Saturday for, no. for the team. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, what do I, <laughs> I thought it was permanent. <laughs> yeah, maybe starting from the next Saturday. Yeah, maybe, we'll just, life. maybe we'll just make a post this Saturday. <laughs> Yeah, because there's a physical exhibition to prepare, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, and also, if you can have a look through the plans that I sent you, because we're kind of dividing the Julia, space. this is not a work talk. <laughs> yeah, true, true. And you're recording. Oh, my God. <laughs> Relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's have a good have a Have a glass of wine and relax a little bit. Yeah. Okay, I will try. The catalogue looks amazing. You know. Yeah, mine, looks mine is always good. Hmm. Yeah. It's super interesting. I just want to have this, that catalogue. I will need to check with Lee and Luia, but okay, if you said that I have to rest today, I will check it tomorrow. Uh, how will they ship it to Lens Cronum, you know, to have it arrive quickly? So it's you guys... Be there. Huh? You think it will be in Lens Cronum? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some copies, not all of them. Great. Yeah, we will we will send an email tomorrow to check on that. Mm -hmm. okay. Tomorrow, six a.m. <laughs> so, but with the catalogs, uh, we we get all of the catalogs, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're bringing your you mean, you're Carola? bringing your suitcase, Carola. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You should, um, you, you will get in Lens Krona one copy of each catalog that we will have there. Yeah. Okay. And but then later on, we will ship you uh, your copies that you have right. So each one of you will, ha will have uh, 10 copies of the exhibitions you are in. Mm -hmm. So okay. 10 atlas and 10 of each exhibition you, you are part of. 
So those will be shipped to you later on, these 10 copy, copies. And now in Lanskrona, we will give you one of each, just for you not to feel sad. Yeah, but <laughs> one of each of the six? Yes, uh, one of, so you will have seven books mm -hmm. in theory, because we will not have the seven books there uh, yet. So yeah. some of the, of the, of the books are not ready yet and they will not be in Lanskrona, but those that will be there, you will have a copy, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. It's a special year. <laughs> <laughs> and is there a way to buy um, catalogs as well somewhere or? What are you doing, Carola? Are you doing a museum at <laughs> What's home going or what? On? <laughs> a library? <laughs> no, I want to sell them for the double of the price. No, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, we, we we usually have them for sale in uh, in um, in um, the review, for example, and in Lanskrona, in Lanskrona, I don't think they will have them for sale, but, but in the review, we will have times we sell them. But if you need more copies for some reason, tell us. I'm scared. <laughs> no, no. If you need a hundred of copies, then we need to reprint. But maybe it's possible. Well, it's like 10 is not enough for me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because it would be a good like portfolio, like showing the work. Also, like a good part of portfolio. Okay, yeah, I will probably go so I can call my mom yeah. and to ask. Uh, I will too. Then use, but yeah, we'll keep in touch. Yeah, I know your emails, phone numbers, everything. You cannot hide. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hopefully you will not wake up a Saturday saying, oh, 11 o'clock, I will go to you. <laughs> Where is the Zoom link? Okay, yeah, see you. Good work, you guys. Huh? Yeah. It, was really, it was really nice. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you the best, soon. The best talk I've seen is in the beginning of Parallel, actually. It's the first one that I attended, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they are getting better. We are getting more... Um, um, organized used, yeah, used to this Zoom thing and sharing screens and stuff. And we are getting no, you're more. doing good. It's good that you did it. I think, uh, yeah. But it's a shame that there are just some, just few people joining, right? Yeah, but you know, my experience is people don't join so much on Zoom because they are shy and they don't want to stay the whole conversation. So mm. they see some bits and then they leave and then they enter again. But when you start seeing the statistics of the Facebook videos, for example, in the last talk, we had 2,000 viewers. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I didn't check yet for, for this conversation because we are still here. But, yeah. but um, and they are growing. So in the first conversation, we, uh, we had less. But as we are making more advertising and promotion, people are coming more. And also after, after, so maybe today we won't have so many views and tomorrow we will have more views already because mm -hmm. people watch it after, afterwards. Yeah. But where okay. do you put the recording? Facebook. Yeah, they stay on Facebook. So everybody okay. can see it again on Facebook. Okay. So if you want to reshare, you can do this. Mm. Yeah, and it will be both on Fakarat and Organ Vida pages, I think. Yes. Mm. Okay. 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 Yeah. Good. Okay. See you soon. So have Ciao. a nice evening. Ciao. You too. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.